Hi, I'm Maura Gamble from the Permaculture Education Institute. Uh, I live in a place called Crystal Waters. It's a permaculture village in Australia in the, in the subtropical part. And I'm based here on Gubby Gubby land and um, acknowledge that this land has never been ceded and pay my respects to the elders past, present and emerging. So permaculture education for me, I think, is a really critical part of the work that I that I feel is important to do in the world at the at at this point in my life. And so I focus my entire energy essentially on the multiple dimensions of permaculture education, from teaching teachers, from offering um, YouTube's podcasts, um, mentoring perma youth. Uh, working with with refugee groups, connecting with Indigenous groups here in Australia to explore the interface between Indigenous knowledge and permaculture thinking, and there's just so many different aspects of of how how permaculture is finding new edges and being redescribed in a way that makes sense today, and I think that is such an important thing to really consider that permaculture is not something that's kind of a fixed set of doctrines or fundamental approach, but it's more of a way of thinking and a way of being in the world and a way of being in relationship with the world and with others. And that that is constantly shifting and changing and that we need to be in conversation continuously with, with people, with the land um, and, and, and between generations and between cultures. And it's this constant redescribing of what, uh, of what permaculture means here and now in this place with the conditions that we're facing that makes it continuously, continuously be relevant in so many different places. And I think when you, when you enter into permaculture teaching or education or community in that way, then it can be something that is so nourishing and, uh, and it, and it is, and it can be a transformative experience to be part of. There's something that I find really powerful about a new approach to education from a permaculture perspective that is, is connecting with, with communities and, and particularly with young people. Um, I'm part of a perma youth program. Well, actually, I'm, I'm kind of mentoring the perma youth program. The perma youth is being led by the local young people in whichever community it's it's beginning to emerge and i find this an absolutely incredible group to be part of because it's it's so self directed and it's an and it's an emergent process and so really what i see is fascinating with this is it's it's education about creating the conditions in which this emergence can take place, as opposed to coming in with a program and a curriculum and going step by step through that. And so what's happening, these the young people are coming together and saying, like, what do we care about in the world? What are the things that we, we know about that we can share with each other? What are the things that we'd like to find out about? And who knows something about that? And how can we invite them in to come and share that with us? And, and I can see as they're in this curious curious space of asking the questions and finding what are the questions that they want to be asking, finding the questions that they didn't know that they wanted to ask through their conversations and the learning emerging out of that space being really profound. And so the insights from that approach to learning, I think, has so much to offer to how we think about permaculture education in so many other realms. So I see what's happening with the, the perma youth as being such a fantastic, fantastic forward thinking model of, um, and, and I don't know if I should even think, call it a model. It's just, you know, it's a way, you know, once you start saying it's a model, then people start to try and replicate a model. You know, it's not about that. It's more about, um, considering the process that's involved in that and the process of exploration, the process of connection, the process of questioning, the process of contextualizing, the process of opening it up in a way that makes it accessible to anybody. The other thing that I love about the Perma Youth is that, that it's all run through the gift economy too. So it's it's a, a, a very open in um, form of education which means that anyone can get involved um, in any different way and what however they are involved is 
a wonderful contribution as well to the whole. So I find this an absolutely fascinating edge to thinking differently about, about education and, and also how it can, uh, how it can be um, shared with, with other fields as well beyond permaculture. So I'd, I'd like to encourage anyone who has young people in their lives to connect in with the Perma Youth and to, to get in touch. They'd love to, to meet people from all around the world, you know, maybe create a local hub where you are and, and connect in with the global youth. And also, if you know, if there's a group who are in and around your community that uh, you feel are able to to make connections directly, say with uh, a group, uh, a perma youth hub in a refugee settlement or in a community that doesn't have access to the resources that you do to think about being a, a partner organization with them so that they, you know, making, making that education accessible as wide as possible. There's a, there's a number of different programs that I'm working on of reimagining education at the moment. Um, there's one that I've I mentioned about working with the youth. Um, there's also working with refugees, um, working with Indigenous communities. But also the, the project I've been holding for a long time is, is shifting and changing permaculture into this online forum that I'm using as well, but trying to make it again, this very accessible and open form of education. So, for example, um, people can come and join any time they like to be part of this educators program. That it can, They can take as long as they want and there's no end. So, you know, there's no, ex there's no expiry dates. There's no due by dates. And I did this because as a, as a mother... I recognised that it was really hard to participate in many different programs that were available to people. And it's it, making things flexible and open that they can weave around people's lives rather than going, okay, you need to be here on this day at this time, and if you don't do that, then you can't participate. That it And it's spacious enough that, you know, if something happens in your family, you need to care for a parent or whatever, that that's fine, that's life. And so we, education needs to weave around that. Um, and also that there's community of practices. So this means that there's not just a delivery model and a assignment model, that the learning happens in the richness of the connections that are created within the course. And so there's multiple opportunities throughout the course that we have, that we have um, education labs, we're exploring different ways of teaching. We have design studios where we explore how people are applying design thinking around the world. We have, um, you know, book clubs and film clubs where people are exploring what other stories people are telling and then relating that back to how they're feeling in their community. We have uh, like all these different kind of um, chat forums where people hop on and they're sharing their successes and their questions and um and the community just jumps in and answers all this and it's this it's a living thing what i'm noticing is that the educational community is a living thing and it's beautiful and it's not controlled by me what i try to do is create the space the kind of this is the conditions you know again that that can happen within um, and then so those people who can pay pay those people who can't um, join in other ways. And so it's, again, it's this open, accessible format of being able to share permaculture education. And so people who are in the refugee settlements have as much access to it as someone in New York. And the youth are also have access to this education. And what happens when they all have access and they start joining in in these various communities of practice, that you get this amazing cross fertilization where the youth are now starting to connect with youth over there. And there there's a disabled young woman who lives here, not far from us, who her mother taught her how to crochet when she was young. Cause she was like picking herself cause she just had really busy hands. Now she makes these beautiful blankets that she donates these blankets. The youth then fundraise with that. And then the money goes to the refugee settlements and they sort of do things like, um, get sewing machines to make washable sanitary pads or buy seeds or tools. And so there's this cross fertilization between the different pro, different groups of people within this community. Um, and so 
this is a permaculture design certificate course and permaculture teacher certificate course, but it's something other as well. And what I noticed was that this shift from it being particularly locational-based, which was a challenge to start with. I was thinking permaculture course has to be in place and it has to be hands-on. What I'm seeing is like, yes, of course, we need to do hands-on and we need to be place-based, but there's something else that's happening in this other form of education. And it's not to say it's either or. I think it's an and. And I think that we need to kind of open up our possibilities and reimagine what this the digital world of connecting with people globally can offer to us in deepening our understanding and connection and awareness and 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 just to shift to this sense that we are this one one humanity that that is caring in our, all our different ways for our our one planet and that we need to have that global sense of this purpose of our work towards um, a positive future. There's something that's always burnt in my belly about caring for the planet. Ever since I was a kid, you know, I would see the injustices of things and I, it, it hurt deeply when I saw something going wrong. And so ever since I was at school, I was, I was the one who was doing the kind of the, the organizing rallies for protections of forests or, you know, the, the peace work and, and all of that. It just somehow it was just in there. I mean, it maybe obviously it was something to do with the way that my parents shared stories with me about the planet and how we need to take care of it and, of, you know, connecting. And, but I think one of the really major changing points in my, my life was when I spent about a year at a place called Schumacher College in England and meeting with many of the different ecological thinkers and leaders and system thinkers and Fritjof Capra and Vandana Shiva and Satish Kumar. And, and it, there's so many people who is thinking about a different world, like a, a new paradigm. And this is what was explored there. So that was kind of my university um, in a way. But from there, I met this woman called Helena Norberg Hodge, who worked a lot in Ladakh, up over the other side of the Himalayas. And she was talking about the work that she did there. And it hit me so strongly, like really powerfully, as I just went straight up to her at the end of the sessions and said, look, if there's any way I can volunteer with you to come and work with you, I would absolutely love it. So that in a, next month, um, I'd, I'd headed up over the Himalayas with her and volunteered and what I experienced in Ladakh was absolutely transformative because I grew up in Melbourne in the suburbs of Melbourne in Australia life was pretty kind of Melbourne-y ordinary you know and I knew about what sustainability meant I could write about it I could research it I could point you to all what the projects were happening here and there but I don't think I really embodied it. I didn't really understand it at a, like that deeper level. There was no kind of spiritual connection. There was no kind of bodily connection. It just was. It was a, an academic notion. In Ladakh, I realized that there's, there's a way of living where everything can come from the earth and go back to the earth and you can live a high quality of life. And it made me question what my life was like back here in Australia and how we needed to move forward. And so when I landed back, I kind of re-examined permaculture and then have just been working in that ever since and very quickly moved into kind of education work with that. And that's then drawn me into really being part of connecting with local Indigenous communities here in Australia because, you know, for 60,000 years, Indigenous people here have been living in this deep relationship to the land. And so there's a, a massive unfolding of this sharing um, happening um, as we speak, and it's incredibly exciting. I think from the conference, I, the, not any one particular thing that's, that's kind of stuck, but it's more of this broader sense that together globally we are re-examining what it is to be in community and learning together. And so I just see this, the diversity of different approaches and the questioning of, of what we understood 
before to be a forms of education. And I feel so inspired um, by all the, the multiple dimensions of what it means to, to be an educator. And I think that was the, one of the most inspiring things for me. And just to be able to have that space to meet people, talk with people, hear different stories. And, you know, sometimes what you, it just kind of seeps. You kind of enter into this soup and it just seeps into you and you don't really notice it. Then every now and then something will pop out and you think, oh, that's right. That was that inspiration from there. So, you know, being creating these environments where you can pop everyone into the soup and allow us all to intersteep, I think is one of the most beautiful things that can happen. And so I was really absolutely delighted to be part of the program. Yeah. And to be, you know, be a participant there too.